forth upon this continent a new nation. How long ago is it? 80 odd years becomes, under his brilliant craftsmanship, editing and reworking, four score and seven years ago. When a people got together and decided, becomes our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation. Amazing. So when he got up and said four score and seven years ago, the people who were paying attention might have scratched their heads and said, wait a minute, I'm doing the math. That's not 1787, that's 1776. Obviously the Declaration of Independence. What's the difference between the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution? Conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. The Constitution condoned slavery. And the Declaration of Independence talked about everybody being created equal and liberty. So he was pressing what we would call a reset button, saying the country didn't start in 1787, it started in 1776. This nation was created on this principle that all men are created equal. That is the fundamental underlying principle of American life, according to Lincoln, and that is a powerful, powerful statement. He is saying governments are instituted among men for only one purpose, that is to secure these rights. And these rights are inalienable, and all people have them, and it is self-evident. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. It is our modern notion of democracy that is forged in this moment. The notion of America as one nation really only emerges in the context of what this fight is. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. This is a speech delivered at a cemetery in the heat of battle with people who lost loved ones in a very bloody war. And there is not a note of triumph, of, of glory in the whole speech. It's almost clinical, it's scientific. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. He uses the sacrifice and the horrific battle to lift everyone to see the greater challenge that is represented by this conflict and to redefine the conflict out of military terms and into almost existential terms. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. One thing that I really love about the speech, the re repetition of the word here, H-E-R-E, -E, and then he keeps saying here, we dedicate ourselves here, and then struggled here. There's this sense of a drawing up from the, the, the blood-soaked earth of this place, um, the kind of uh, energy uh, that will re-consecrate the nation to the task of concluding the war and ending slavery. That from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. Democracy was at stake. The, the, the very essence of the speech talks about uh, it is to be proven uh, that democracy can be sustained. And if we lose this war, uh, then democracy cannot be sustained. The word slavery does not appear in the Gettysburg Address, but nobody could mistake what he's talking about when he says a new birth of freedom. And, uh, and then he ends with a series of proposals. And that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. I mean, that's... That says it all. This country is meant to survive. 
Lincoln understands that, as did George Washington, as did FDR. Um, this nation is, has to survive. It's an absolutely perfect um, prose poem. You can't take uh, anything out of it and have the same effect. It, it, it relies entirely on its entirety. Lincoln, to this day, has given us the most concise, telegraphic, and uh, basic definition of democracy. A government of the people, by the people, and for the people. He really deeply believed in democracy. He understood that that included freeing the slaves and a notion of political equality. And, you know, very, very important that the fourth word before the end is perish. I mean, he doesn't end by saying, we're going to win, and, you know, victory is ours. He says, you know, the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. It ends with this kind of, like, heartbroken sound. It's, you know a masterpiece of the highest order.